Thanks to CuriosityStream for sponsoring today's video. When New Horizons made its flyby of Pluto back in 2015, it barely slowed down at all. Its trajectory after the encounter actually took it further into the Kuiper Belt, dispersed belt of asteroid-like objects beyond the orbit of Neptune. Given that this region is so far from Earth, it is largely uncharted territory, a place where no man has gone before. So, did the New Horizons team know of an object that they could visit next? Yes, they did, and its name is Arakoth. But incredibly, they didn't even know of its existence before New Horizons was launched. So what is Arakoth? What does it look like? And what makes it unlike anything we've ever seen before? I'm Alex McColgan, and you're watching Astrum, and together we will explore almost everything there is to know about Arakoth. You see, the year previous to the Pluto flyby, time had been given to the New Horizons team with the Hubble Space Telescope, so that they could locate an object for New Horizons to visit after Pluto. Hubble actually discovered three new objects reasonably close to where New Horizons would be going, and after studying the data, the 35 km long object now known as Arakoth was chosen. As a result, Arakoth would be the first object visited that was discovered after the spacecraft visiting it was launched. New Horizons was healthy and well after the Pluto flyby, with propellant left in its tank and years left in its RTG, and so commands were quickly sent to New Horizons by the mission team to adjust its course so that it could rendezvous with a promising new target. Being so small and far away, we didn't know much about the object, all Hubble could detect was its colour and the dips and peaks in its brightness as it rotated. However, scientists also observed Arakoth's occultation of a star. Incredibly, from this occultation, they were able to predict the shape of Arakoth, and as you will see later, this prediction was almost exactly right. At the very least, they knew it would be an elongated object, so potentially a contact binary, or simply a long asteroid-type object. It was up to New Horizons to confirm their predictions. Three years after leaving Pluto, in August of 2018, New Horizons began its approach phase at a distance of 172 million kilometers. At this distance, Arakoth was barely visible to New Horizons against the backdrop of distant stars. But by December 2018, it was bright in New Horizons view. Traveling at 51,000 kilometers an hour, New Horizons was rapidly gaining on Arakoth, and science data at this point was already beginning to be collected. As New Horizons got closer and closer, Arakoth's shape could start to be resolved. It was bizarre looking, what appeared to be a contact binary, and was relatively crater-free with a lumpy surface. It was unlike any of the asteroids or comets we had ever seen up close before. On the 1st of January 2019, New Horizons made its closest approach at a distance of only 3,500 kilometers from its surface, and it was on this day that it captured most of its science data. This flyby made Arakoth the most distant object ever visited by a spacecraft, being 6.5 billion kilometers from the Sun at the time, or roughly 45 times further away than the Earth is from the Sun. Being this far away, the data speed was abysmally slow between Earth and New Horizons at only 1 kilobit per second, although I will mention that it's incredible to me that the technology was there for them to communicate with New Horizons at all. This slow data transfer speed has meant that it's taken around 2 years to send all of the data it collected around Arakoth back to Earth. The highest priority data was sent back first, namely the images, although I do remember at the time that the highest resolution images took a while to arrive back. Only low resolution images were available when all the media outlets were publishing stories of the flyby, meaning I would guess that most of the general public never saw Arakoth in all of its glory. So, here it is, the highest resolutions we have of this fascinating object in true colour. What you'll immediately notice about Arakoth is that it is reddish in colour, unlike most asteroids nearer to home, which are greyer and darker. It's red because of a similarity it shares with Pluto. It has an abundance of tholins on its surface. Tholins are organic compounds that have been broken down by solar and cosmic rays. Organic compounds on the surface probably included methane and ammonia at one point, 
However, Arakoth does not have any of these substances left, probably due to its low mass. What Arakoth's spectra does reveal is that it has methanol, hydrogen cyanide, and water ice on the surface. This abundance of methanol on Arakoth's surface is the main factor behind its red color, as irradiated methanol is likely the cause of the tholins. However, there is a bit of a mystery in Arakoth's spectra, as interestingly, there is also an absorption band at 1.8 micrometers in Arakoth's spectra, and scientists do not know what this compound is. It is yet to be identified, it's nothing we've seen before. It's a shame we weren't able to get a sample of its surface to be able to say for sure. The next thing you'll notice about Arakoth, compared to asteroids closer to home, is the absence of small impact craters. It is believed that this is due to the nature of the Kuiper belt itself. It could have 20 to 200 times the mass of our asteroid belt, but a lot of this mass is also contained within large Pluto-like bodies which dot the belt. While we can't say for sure what the population of the Kuiper belt is, it is definitely more spread out than our asteroid belt, simply because it's 20 times as wide and has a much bigger circumference. Being this far from the sun means orbital speeds are much slower, so even if an impact does occur, it will be at a low velocity. Meteorites you see creating shooting stars in the Earth's atmosphere may hit us at around 75 kilometers a second, whereas impacts in the Kuiper belt may only be at speeds of 300 meters per second. This depression here, which looks like a crater, may not actually have been formed from a collision, but it could be a sinkhole caused by the escape of volatile substances just under the surface. The lack of collisions means that what we see of Arakoth now is like a time capsule from the early solar system, an object that has been preserved for billions of years. Although, a slow collision is one of the ways this object may have come into being. When asteroids in the asteroid belt impact each other at high speeds, they either cause craters or cause the body to completely fragment. But a slow collision, like those in the Kuiper belt, may cause both objects to simply merge. It may also be that the two lobes of Arakoth formed side by side in a swirling cloud of ice fragments that coalesced into two orbiting bodies. Eventually, these bodies got closer and closer until they joined together. In any case, the merging would have happened very slowly because there weren't many fractures or stress lines to speak of, so the maximum speed of the collision would be no more than 2 meters a second. Plus, the two objects would have also had to have been tidily locked to each other before merging too. The fact that both lobes of Arakoth look very similar gives weight to the theory that they formed in the same region. Before Arakoth got its formal designation, you may have known it by a different name, as it was originally nicknamed Ultima Thule. Now, the individual lobes are known as Ultima and Thule. You'll also notice some very bright regions on the surface. The ones in the crater are probably from avalanches, as material fell inward after the sinkhole appeared. The other major bright patch is found around the connecting point between the two lobes. It's not known with certainty why this region is brighter, but theory suggests that this region sees the least amount of sunlight, so perhaps volatile substances can build up here, like ammonia ice. It could also be that because this region would be the center of gravity of the object, loose material rolls down the lobes to collect in the center. With a density of only 0.5 grams per centimeter cubed, Arakoth is not going to be densely packed, but it is probably porous volatile materials would have escaped the interior of the object over time due to an internal heat source, but then these materials would freeze on the surface, leaving behind only rocky remains inside. This heat source can still be detected to some degree, as models suggest that Arakoth should only be 12 to 14 Kelvin. However, New Horizons found that it was in fact 29 Kelvin. That is still extremely cold, just not quite as cold as we were expecting. There's one last mysterious characteristic of Arakoth that isn't immediately apparent from these images, that only got discovered after trawling through the New Horizons data, and that is that Arakoth is in fact much flatter than we would have expected. We didn't notice it at first because Arakoth rotates like this, meaning we didn't see too much of it lit up from a side angle. We don't really know why it's flat, maybe it was due to centrifugal forces when the individual lobes formed, 
implying it was spinning a lot faster than it is today. Or maybe it's due to the way Arakoth orbits and rotates, meaning one side of the object is constantly exposed to the sun for decades at a time. This would cause volatile substances to escape only on one side, until later in the year when the other side is exposed to the sun. Research is still underway to model the cause. As New Horizons left Arakoth, it looked back and caught one last glimpse of its silhouette against the backdrop of stars. Who knows if Arakoth will ever be visited again, so it may well be that this is the last close-up view that we will ever have. What's next for New Horizons? Well, it still has life in its battery and 11 kilograms of fuel still on board, so the hunt is now underway to search for any additional targets. Beyond that, it will follow the path of the voyagers, passing through the heliosphere of the solar system in the 2030s. Even if no other Kuiper Belt object can be discovered close enough to its current trajectory that it can do a third flyby, New Horizons has already given us a wealth of data on Kuiper Belt objects that we would not have known about otherwise. Who knew that this was what Pluto would look like? That Charon has a red cap? That Arakoth would be flat? And considering that these are the only Kuiper Belt objects we've ever seen up close, there's bound to be a lot more out there that's still waiting to surprise us. Alan Stern, the head of the New Horizons team, gave a fascinating lecture about Pluto and beyond on CuriosityStream, if you want to get an insight on the mission from the inside. His passion for the mission is contagious, and it really is thanks to him that we have a Pluto mission in the first place. CuriosityStream also has thousands of really high quality streamable documentaries about a variety of topics, including my favourite topics on space and science. They also have apps so that you can access them on your phone, computer, TV and more. So if you want to access this lecture or just have a passion for learning no matter the topic, have a look at CuriosityStream. Use my link in the description and the code ASTRUM at checkout and you'll only have to pay $14.99 for a whole year's subscription. I definitely recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching. If you like this New Horizons video, you should check out some of the other spacecraft videos I've made here for more of the same. A big thanks to my patrons and members for supporting the channel. If you want to support too and have your name added to this list, check the links in the description. All the best and see you next time.